So I think we'll start with, if you have any questions from the yesterday's one, do you remember? Um, yeah. So you, we can, we can start. Um, all right. So we'll talk about, you know, pointers as function parameters. Okay, pointer to an arrays, then arrays of pointers. <coughs> then we'll talk about pointers to structures which we have spoken. Then we'll talk about allocating dynamic memory location of memory. And then we'll talk about, you know, some problems related to the dynamic memory locations. So something like, you know, memory leak and data corruptions. We'll also talk about, yeah, yeah. And we'll then also, I'm willing to see that if we can get into uh, maybe pointer to function code. So that's also a little challenging. So we need some experience there as well. So I'll be covering all, yeah. So media, animation. Then I get into my drive. And get into build with codes. And uh, this gets into concepts. <laughs> So today, pointer arrays dot c. So let's talk about a uh, situation. So one problem statement first. How do we return multiple values? So we'll talk about So there are a lot of cases where you know arrays and pointers are replaceable or interchangeable. One of the very common thing is when you manipulate array and pointers with their addresses, they are quite interchangeable. Let's take an example here of that we have a program where a function call is some calculate okay demo. Now assume that we have an array list. So I'll say a list and it has some content here. Okay. And I want to access this entire element by using a pointer. So simplest way you could do is you could declare an integer pointer and then you can hold the address of I list because the name of the array itself is the base address. So we can do that, isn't it? Hello, you can hear me, right? Venu? Yeah, I, I can, I can hear you. Yeah. Probably, uh, Hello. Hello. Uh, I. Venu, you can hear me, right? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, Animesh. I can. Ah. I can hear you. All right. All right. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I can. 
So, you know, I was trying to explain about pointer to an array. So it's an example of a pointer okay. to an array. Just. Okay. So how do I access it is we can do the arithmetic stuff. So I can say for i assigns to zero and then while i is less than now you know the size is in this case I'll hard code it to be five. five. Okay. Yeah and plus plus i. So how do I access it via pointer? So I would say ip which is the first address plus i and in bracket and then dereference this. It's important mm -hmm. to notice this. So what happens? IP plus zero, IP plus one, IP plus two, IP plus three. So it will keep going the offset of the integer. Okay. And I can say something like, you know, printf and verify this. The data accessed via pointer is mod d slash n and this. So what's going on here? A mechanism by which I'm performing the pointer to an array. So having one handler, I can have an access to okay. the entire list. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an easy way of uh, indirectly accessing a block of an address by just one handler. Okay. okay. So you can think of, you know, like I have a RAM of 1K, 2K, 3K. One pointer can directly have an access to the entire memory location. Okay. So yeah, let's try this first. Pointer arrays. See, I is undeclared, line number 11. Let's add one. come back here try this out so you can see via pointers we are able to access it now in this case once the pointer is holding the address of another you cannot hold the address of the back you means you need to keep traveling you know so there is no dedicated address so each pointer does not have a dedicated address so there is a concept of Arrays of pointers. So arrays of pointer in the sense, I can take an and then say five. Mm -hmm. It means what? Now there will be a pointer. So I'm creating an array of a pointer. IP of IPL of zero, IPL of one, IPL of two, IPL of three, and IPL of four. All of them are four different, five different pointers. Okay. Each of them can also hold a dedicated address also. So that might also be a scenario where you want to have what? An array of pointer to hold the unique addresses. It means at every any given point of time, each handler will be holding a unique address. But that's not the case in the line number 11, oh, sorry, 10. I'm sorry. Yeah, so the, the dedicated address is one which uh, we can, we can uh, always access animal. It's like for five different array, there is five different pointers. And in line number 10, we have only one pointer which is holding the starting address. And after that, it will lose the first address, will get into the second address. So while it is pointing to second address, it cannot access the first or any other element. Oh, okay. Because a pointer at once is holding only one address in the first one. Okay, okay. But here is an example where we have an array of a pointer. Okay. So here, what we need to do, we need to assign the addresses. So how do I assign the address? Again, for loop, and here I will say, IPL of I gets assigned to I list of all. And then something very similar to that for printing. So I'll say Y and let's have print.
So here I can use an array style. So I can say star IP of pi. Okay. Okay. Where is I? Okay. Type is IPL here. Yeah. The LIS name was missing there. So you can see what it says that whenever you use a pointer, array to array assignment, not possible. So you will say individual addresses are being assigned. Because I list of I refers to what? A value. I need to get the address of it. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, we'll keep giving you the value, right? Yes. Yeah. As you can see, the resultants are same, but now the difference is always IPL of zero will always refer to 21. IPL of one will always refer to 45 and so and so on, you know. Okay. So it becomes very nice. Yeah. So, you know, there might be situations where, you know, if you're using a multi-threaded programming, and these are five unique locations and you want each CPU to access these locations directly or simultaneously. Okay. Then array of pointer can be handed, right? Yeah. So that even though some in sing, single clock cycle, if five CPUs are trying to access five different location, okay, right. it's in parallel execution, there will not be any side effect. Otherwise you have to serialize it. In the previous case, yeah. if it is a sequential access, it is fine, correct? Yes. Yeah. One by one, we can increment or decrement or assign the address and move ahead. But the moment it comes to parallel access, it will fail, right? That's not a good choice. Yes. So by knowing this, you are as a developer in control to decide, depending on the situation, what kind of you know uh, pointer should be used for accessing. Yeah. In a mirror, it is always a good choice between space and time, right? Here you can see there's only one handler. So only one memory is used. Here five memories are being used. Correct? Yeah. Right? yeah. Now let's talk about passing in arrays and trying to control that. So assume that I have a function get square. Okay, you have to construct this now. So suppose I have a get square. Okay. And I say I list. And then we will have print square. So size will be five. Let's pass the size. As you know, array size will be lost when you pass, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are two functions which you have to design. So, how do I achieve it? Idea is that this function definition should take the list. So, 21, 45, this entire thing should be passed. Correct? Yes. Um, so, we don't have to define it as an array inside uh, get square. Ah, so, you have to write the definition for it. So, you have to help me okay. solve this code. So now you need to build this code. Tell me. So um, it doesn't have any return type, right? Yeah. So because it doesn't have any return type, I'll have to say void. And I can say get square. And then I can say what it is. It is an array. So how do you store the address of an array? Use the pointer. Correct? Yeah, yeah. So I'll say int star any name, say P or IP, just easy. And then int size, correct? Yes. <clears throat> now what do I do? Um loop? Yeah, for loop. I less than size. Size. Yeah. Because you know that's the reason of 
why we pass size. Otherwise, there is no way to know what is less than. Correct? Yeah. 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 And then what do I do? Star IP is equal to what? Star IP plus I. It means I have to keep rolling, right? IP plus zero, so IP is zero. IP, sorry, IP plus I is IP's first element, which is the array's first element, right? Base address. Yeah. And then star star, again, IP plus one. Oh, no, sorry, I. Now you see, there will be two asterisks. So one refers to dereferencing it. And another is a multiplier asterisk. Okay. And even though they appear together, it can be confusing, very, very confusing for a developer. But syntactically, it is correct. What I'm doing? I'm dereferencing a pointer and multiplying with this asterisk, same thing. And after the multiplication, the output is going to be stored in the same element. Yeah. So how will it be enumerated is very simple. IP plus zero is equal to IP plus zero multiplies IP plus zero. Correct? Okay. IP plus zero value will be what? 21. 21 multiplied by 21. This also will be 21. Okay. Right? So something like this will be the resultant is what we are expecting. Okay. Correct? Yeah. Now how do I print it? Very similar. Yeah. We can generalize the printing rather than again writing again and again. So print square. Again, I need to take a pointer to hold the address and then again in size. Name can be anything. Yeah. You can take the same I for I. I think I can copy from here. Is it right? So it works right in this way. Sorry, excuse me. Yeah. Is it clear? Yeah. Uh, this is one, so it is, one yeah. second. Yeah. I, I just go through. I'm a little confused. No, no worries. See, the idea is that yeah. whenever we want to construct, this will be a scenario. You know, sometimes you know you need to pass entire array or list. This is just an array. Tomorrow, we are going to have a situation. You have to pass very large objects, and you have to store them. Say, for example, we will have some large structure which will represent a device or some cookies or some information from the user which they are passing or some certificate or some, <coughs> excuse me, some device profile, anything, you know. Okay. And those profiles, sorry, uh, will. Sorry, I'm not feeling well a bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, what I was trying to say is, you know, when you pass the pointer, always, you know, base address of an array will be replaced as pointer in the function parameter, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, through pointer itself, through in one parameter itself, we can pass a lot of parameter. How? As an array list, correct? Tomorrow, you can have arrays of structures also. Okay. So we'll do that right now only we'll do that. So here the idea was to perform the arithmetic and verify. So you can see that we are able to increment, decrement the pointer, asterisk the pointer and so on. So. Correct? Yes. Yeah. I mean, and these, uh, in the get square, so when we pass I list, so that's yeah. clearly referencing to 
um, the pointer of I list, right? That is I. Um, yeah, the base address, the starting address of this. The starting address. Oh, okay. uh, so what we should do is see. Let's debug this. What you could do, you can say printf, and we'll say, okay, IP holds or has or the pointer IP points to mod P. Base address of Now this has to be verified also. Okay. Here, let's print the base address. Array. I list points to mod P. So I can say I list. Correct? So before get square, I'm trying to print the value base address of I list. And when we pass this I list and trying to see IP, so both must be same. Correct? So, yes, yeah. So, so the idea is very clear because you we already understood this concept while I was talking about array. Mm -hmm. It will be very weird. Imagine that if we have one million line, uh, uh, you know, array list, and if we create a one million copy, it will be a damn slow program, right? Yes. Yeah. And and if I have to have 10,000 of 1 million such copies to be created, I mean, it is a crazy thing to think about. Yeah. That's why while the, the design itself, Dennis Ritchie thought this wonderful idea mm -hmm. that why do we need to pass by, well, it doesn't make sense. It will just outreach my memory right away. So let's have the indirect addressing pointer being used for this technique. And it works wonder. Okay. Now, on the similar lines, let's talk about a function is supposed to return only one value, right? Yes. Now, how do we return more than one value? That's the thing. Suppose if we have to more than one data to be stored. How do we return that? Right? I just made a note for you. Yeah. Now imagine that I have another function here, which is, okay. Give even. Okay. 
something like this is a function. And now I'll say int star. And then I say int okay list and then I'll have say if I have to check all the numbers, so I need to say for index how do I check that they are even or not so I'll say and within this four we'll do what if list of I mod two is equal to zero then return what list of i else just don't care i don't care about other because it's only supposed to give me even numbers so i can't say it's a false or i can otherwise i can write an else statement also as saying odd 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 or not even not even but why do we need to do that your function is very clearly written to perform give what? A list of even number. Yep. Right? Now, will this work is the first question. The challenge here is multiple return. Because the moment you say return, the function is returned. How will the second time the function will be ever called? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to explain this. Now you see what we do is we try to say give even. We're just trying to call this function. I don't want to store anything, just placeholder. First and foremost, what it is trying to say is that you are trying to return a value rather than an address because arrays are always referred as well address so it must be returning the address right individual address the thing is the can it have all the returns in the loop let's check that there's one very interesting warning also coming up so looks like it has done something and returned let's try to print one message here a debug message kind of thing Hit even. <coughs> and then we will see that at least once it would have been given a call. Forget about the result first. We can say hit even has arrived at least once. But it could not go for the next looping. Okay. Are you getting it? Why? Because the moment you say return from a function, that's it. You have returned from the function. So this function has to be called 12 times or 10 times. That will be horrific. Okay. So what techniques we should do? We need to store this into some other list. Mm -hmm. Whenever you find. So I can say something like list. Okay. Store. So I can say even list maybe. And I can say in this example, I'm just hard coding to be six. Otherwise, we can put something like max. Okay. Because we anticipate there will be six elements. Correct? Mm -hmm. So whenever it says do not return, rather store the content. So only when it is more divided by zero, I would say even of list of 
i that will assign to what list of i i'm storing one of them right so this for loop will run for 12 times six times hit even will arrive whenever it arrives at that time event list of i will, will be, be stored uh, uh, now the challenge is going to be the way this appropriation is there. The event list is six, right? But the number is going for 12 times, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so what do we do? See, we are building logic now. Yeah. Maybe J is equal to zero. And here we can just say even list of J assigned to list and plus plus j that's fair enough correct yes yeah even we can do some more checks like if the j value goes beyond six if it is greater than or equal to six mm -hmm. then you should break because you know you have only six elements you cannot go beyond okay so assume that you know there is a flood of even numbers coming like some 10,000 even numbers but your storage is only six you cannot go to keep bleeding beyond six right yes so you can also check for that if required and say that okay that's the max i can store it and that's it right yeah yeah, yeah. And if after I, this for yeah tell me i mean if i mean if we need to like just print this and see i mean the event list what what it's holding i mean we we have to like print ah, yeah. if you want you can do that here but the whole idea is why we should print up here i i can i can do it for you just for your verification yeah. and we'll say even list of That's okay, right? Yeah. Now you can see there are some garbage coming up. Three, four, five, six times. But yeah, it's it is coming for six times, that is for sure. Yeah. But it's garbage. That's a different concept. You know, when we compile this program, this compiler was pretty smart to give you a warning also, which was ignoring early. Okay. Okay. Which was like, I'll make it as wall. Yeah. Now you can see it says something like this, that pointer is going beyond the limit and other things. Okay. The okay. challenge is, that whenever you declare a local variable, mm -hmm. the lifetime of this local variable is within this function. Correct? Yes. So the moment you go out of this function, it is lost. Mm -hmm. So how do I make it persistent? One option is I can make this, both the variable to be out of the function, global. like a global variable. And then try to realize it. Okay. Let's say. Okay, it looks to be not storing the value. Yeah. What could be wrong? This doesn't matter, but yeah, this one. Let's try to print both the values. List of I. Yes. 
So it is going for looping 12 times. Yes, yes. Now you see the values are correct 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. But even list is not accepting it. Yes. Whenever I say even list of J, it doesn't accept it. So, plus plus is happening first and then we are printing. Let's try this. Outside. Got it. Okay. I have tested for checking as to be done in if. Yeah, so yeah. j is 0, then you come out of it and then you say Increment. plus plus j and then go for the next loop. Okay. But in this case, the j will be incremented how many times? So 12, 12 times. You are forcing, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So after printf, placement will be a good choice. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Now let's see. Yeah. Correct? Yes. Because you were incrementing in the beginning. So the, I'll comment now this. The whole idea is after the computing, when you are done with this, mm -hmm. you have to return the entire array by saying what? Return even, even list, list, which is the base address of the array. Yeah. And then we should call that in uh, main. Exactly. Exactly. Here. So here, what is it going to return? The base address of an uh, array? Yeah. Yeah, even so it's an array. So I have to store a pointer over here. So I will say, okay. See. Even PTR. Is equal to this address. Now what is even PTR? It is a pointer. So I'll go on top and declare int star even PTR. Get that? Yeah. Now just by doing this. Okay. Something I missed. Yeah, the EIV even. Uh, so it was E V E N P T R, right? E -N. Underscore P T R. That looks to be correct here. Yeah. What's my function name? Give even. Yeah. Typo is it? It should be give even. See, right now I'm not printing. Okay. It's been assigned. So I need to know, navigate it. Something like this. Make it as even underscore PTR. So because you're printing only five elements will be printing because you have made it as less than five. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Correct? Now this is a very tough problem. Whenever you return, okay, and block of address, how do you know where will it end? See, when you pass the function, you can mention the parameter. Agree? Yeah. But when you return, how? That's a tough thing. Yeah. There is no legal way of doing this. <laughs> Means tomorrow, if I say something like instead of six, Somebody says 60 also. There's no other choice, but program will keep romping over. Array index out of bound. Yeah. Luckily that you're getting zero. Sometimes it will crash, give segmentation fault also. Okay. Right? You can go up to 
say 60,000. Yes. So there's no, you know, legal way of controlling the array address out of bound. You can see here, say, fault is very clearly visible. Yes. So how do you control this? One of the technique yesterday you used in variable argument list, day before yesterday, I think. So what we did is, we said that the first element itself will refer the yeah, AB. Oh. Yeah. The second thing is there is a global variable kind of uh, value which is updated by the function itself. Okay. It means I can have a size over here. Int max return list. Or list size, which is zero, okay. Mm -hmm. And before returning this, we know the value of uh, so here I can say max return list size is equal to j okay and here we can print Because a global variable, right? Visibility is there. Yes. I can try and check this now. Max return size is to be zero. How? Is it zero? Uh, Should be. be It did mean something, right? Where is it printing, by the way? Yeah. Um, Even I can come out and assign this and check here. Because whatever the value of J is, it will retain after the for loop also. So it should show me that. No, it doesn't show me. But you got the idea what I'm trying to say, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you know, the J should carry the value. So I know that it is six, right? Plus is it's incrementing, right? Yeah. So it should be six. Incrementing, I mean, when, by, before, yeah. It used to write, it was anyway printing that. Yeah. If I place this and print this, it, it definitely makes sense. You know, here what happens is max values are again and again getting assigned. So it will get the correct value. That was my idea. Here. Okay. Every time, if it is successful, so mm -hmm. J is zero. If it is second successful, then it is one, two. Like this, it should be the case. Is what? Yeah. Why is it not assigning as a question mark? Yeah. Let me see. Oh, I'm printing at a different place. See here. The print is before the function call. How will it assign? You got that? Much okay. before the function itself, we are trying to print the global. Okay. That's true, right? Because it is anyway zero. Yes. Only yes. when the function is called, you can see this impact, correct? Yeah. yeah. Simply booting the question up here. Now you yeah. see this, yeah. right? 
So then you can specify here. Now you see here it's five means I need the result as six. So that's why idea was come out from this. J will retain the value out of this. So legal value will be stored here. The final value of J will be here. Okay. Six. So I mean, now you can assign that as a max here. Yeah, got it, no? Yeah, I mean, if, if I change it, uh, change the I, um, like when you, when you increase the value of I, it was giving segmentation fault, right? So since we are, you know, so if I, if I go for a higher number, it still gives the same error, right? How? Yes. How will you go? No, no. Because max value is almost updated every time, right? I mean, for example, I mean, if I, instead of I, I less than six, I give same same number, six, 60,000. <laughs> of course, it will crash. So, <laughs> it will crash, yeah. Of course, of course. The whole idea is, instead of hard coding these values, we should generalize it. So tomorrow an algorithm, suppose tomorrow if the list, somebody else takes this code and he increases this code from 12 to 20,000. So mm -hmm. right now we are hard coding. Tomorrow, you know, we might be connecting it to some sensor here. Okay. And sensor will be, you know, completely interrupted with an external event, right? Yeah. yeah. So it may be continuous, it may be asynchronous, it may be non-synchronous, I mean, synchronous at times, right? So you do not know how many such data samples you'll get. You may be getting 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 data, right? Yeah, yeah. And for all those data which you are sampling, you want to only accept, say, even in that algorithm. Only the even data will be accepted. Yeah. So if you consider those scenarios, now suddenly that data has become dynamic in nature, okay? okay. Right now it is static here. But if it is connected to an external hardware, it will keep pumping the data based on the external sensor, right? Yes. Yeah. Then the, you do not know the end of uh, the list. So in that case, this max return size techniques can be more useful, one. Okay. Second can be, you know, sometimes people do what is, instead of returning an integer, they return structures itself. Mm -hmm where in a structure you can have one of them as pointer member which is an uh, array list what could be the another technique is that you could take a structure and return it rather than having an integer one member will talk about the max list and another one will be talking about the another list mm -hmm. for example let's take a variation in this just to you know give you some more understanding and how you can write different ways the same program. Mm -hmm. Shall we take that? Yeah, sure. So assume that now I don't want to use this global variable technique. I'm going to use here, say, even data structure, something like this. And that's it, start. Now what does this even TS refer to? You must be thinking. It refers to an struct, even TS. And here we will have one max return size. And another one is going to be a list. Or six. In this case, correct? Yeah. And then I do type def struct even ds and i make a data structure of so now even ds means what it will return the address of a structure okay 
Yeah. So I need to declare an structure which can exist. So I will say event. Event DS is my data type, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll create an object of say event list. Or just even LST. For readability. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to shut this all off. Use this else. Use this logic and if got it now, yeah, yeah, and now what I do is plan that. So, even list internally refers to what one member like this, and then six member internally, correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I can say even list, this is zero, comma, zero. Correct? Because this is an array. Okay. Um, zero dot, zero dot, zero dot. So I'm just giving an example here okay. about how do you declare an structure, if you remember. You declare in structure, you have one member as this. So how do you initialize a data member? Even list is what? It's an object of this structure, correct? A variable, yeah. which internally represents to one integer and one array of six integer. Mm -hmm. So this first element is initialized as zero, rest is initialized as another zero, zero. It's an array. So I've used an array initialization technique, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. If you think this is very confusing, you could also use another technique, assignment technique. Even list dot, what can we say? Max return list size is equal to zero. Yeah. Right. Even list dot, even list of zero is equal to zero and so and so on. It is more hectic, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'll skip this. Let's skip this zero here. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, all these six elements will store the data, right? My data member is as it is. So list is as it is. So I'll have to have that. Right, I that list will be there. Only here, instead of saying even list of zero, what I need to do? Even. I need to say, yeah, tell me, even underscore list okay. dot even list. Fair enough. Though it is the same name, it is applicable. Yes, yeah, I agree, yes. Okay, but compiler may say that the variable name and this member name are the same and they all belong to a structure. So kindly use a different name. Mm -hmm. Okay, that you can see in the compiler. Some cribbing will come. Yeah. Okay, so it may be error also. Undeclared identify reporting once kind of stuff will come. We need to handle that very carefully. So we'll just say even list. We'll just say even L. Even L. Even L dot max. Okay. Here also, 
this is even L. dot even list, correct? List of J and then I, J plus plus as it is. Here max list size is a part of what? My member, so. Even L dot max size. Return will be what again? Even address of even list. Even L. Like this. So now we need to give a user a documentation that hey, whenever you use this particular function, this function returns what? A structure of something like this. Where the first element will be storing what? The amount is the limit of the list. And the second one will contain the actual result of the list, like that. So as a developer here. This will also change. This part is only applicable if I say if algo one, then it should take this one, right? Yes. Else, it should go for something else. First, this is the only part we'll try to verify. See, it is saying that you have a structure and you're trying to return the local of it. Problem is the same. What are we trying to do? We are trying to return a local array. It's in stack. So how do I do it? Either we make this variable as global or static. Correct? Static also does what? It retains the value across the calls. Remember, no? Allocate the memory once. Yeah. But yeah. static will be limited to that particular fu function. Ah, yeah. which is fine. But we are returning the address of it, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a technique where we know that it will be only be accessed within this. Nobody else will be able to play with this. Okay. After I am done with my algorithm, then what I do? I have a loophole to return the address of that element. So it is still a connected chain. Okay. It means through this function, you did all the marshalling job or whatever job you wanted to do. And then after that, the location is returned to somebody so that he can access it and even edit it. So these techniques will come across in the code. A lot of codes use you like this. So now let's try to see that if this warning is gone, correct? Yeah. Now we have to look to print this part. So how do we print? It's simple. Here we will say get given, get square, or what is that function? Get even, I guess. Give even. In this case, what is that we are expecting? A structure pointer has to be returned. So I have to declare instead of even PTR, we have to declare a pointer member of a structure, right? Yeah. So I will say even ds star say sptr structure to pointer. Even ds. You know why we use this kind of uh, variable convention because by looking at it also you know that from where are you coming you know otherwise you have to go from one source code to another to find whether this is a integer whether it is a structure whether it is there you know okay. so you'll have some coding guidelines in your coding variable. code base just by looking at the variable i know that where are you coming from are you object are you a pointer are you a handler are you a referent like are you static and so on. So this is my pointer. So this pointer is going to be assigned here. So I'll say str ptr
SPTR event DS assigns to get event DS. Now this point remember will access what the members. So how do I get them access member access? How do I access the structure member pointer of max return size? Correct. Printer. Getting the how do you print the structure member? Remember, if you have a structure member, so it's, it's a pointer, right? Mm -hmm. So via pointer, how do I access my elements of the structure? So pointer arrow mark of that member, pointer arrow mark of the another element. Okay. Did you forget that? Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. no problem. So I'll just yeah. try to remind you. You can see here yesterday we tried. There's a device here. This is a structure. Yeah. These are some data members, right? Yeah. Yeah. And one is we are using a normal data member, non-pointer member, just like the way you declare any variable, you declare a structure like this. Mm -hmm. You initialize those structures. Yeah. So if I have to use and print these elements, what do I do? dev data dev underscore data dot the dev id, dev ID. Yeah. right which yeah. is the moment i use a pointer member something like this line number 18 pointer must hold the address of an existing structure which i am doing right now mm -hmm. yeah address of dev data is what is this address of the structure yeah. right yes uh, and then how do i access it through pointer by using an arrow mark Right, the first line. Yes, yes, yes. So the same thing is what we are trying to show here in this example. Okay. See, we are reusing a lot of concept. If you see my uh, code, which I'm constructing in front of you, mm -hmm. because you know constructing the code is much much uh, intuitive for you. You can see as if you are only you know building the code. Rather than if I take a large code and just place it and just browse it through and say that this is what is happening, you won't get the you know feel. Yeah, this is grip. Yeah, more realistic. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Approach. You can verify, no? We can discuss it, and yeah. it's like you know, it's like an XP. We used to follow an agile concept. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of it? Uh, yeah, agile. Uh, so we had an XP method. We used to call it as extreme programming. Uh -huh. So was, it's yeah. other, other form of Ajay or it's, it's, a, it's another form of Ajay. Oh, okay. So when I was in Subex in 2000, I think uh, five, oh. yeah. So I was, you know, practicing this with the team. So mm -hmm. extreme programming talks about like two people working on the same machine. One is an observer and one is the modulator or the developer. Mm -hmm. So idea is while, you know, I'm typing the code, somebody is watching the code and he will say, no, 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 you can change this, hey, semicolon is missing. Hey, no, no, the variable is missing. So initially, it will be very intrusive. It will look like, so why he's disturbing? I know what I'm typing. Yeah. But slowly what happens is, you will see that, you know, a lot of errors gets removed there. And, there. and then when you construct the code, you have a parallel person also who's getting how the code is being constructed. So he also learns the coding. Oh, okay. And then after three, four hours, we switch it. Okay. Now the observer becomes the moderator, moderator. It means he becomes the coder and the coder becomes an observer. Oh, okay. So by this, what we do, we build a backup also for a developer. Yeah. Yeah. So tomorrow, if you are having a stomach pain, somebody else is free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so is still being followed. Um... It is still being followed. Uh, see, the idea of this is to increase the productivity and de decrease the usage of, you know, the, the infrastructure, but it is good for the team when they are 400, 500. The, the moment you have 500 plus people, no, mm -hmm. it starts breaking up a little bit because you know a lot of uh, egoistic factors and other things come. People come in the cabin and shout that my algorithm will be checked in, not his algorithm. Okay. And both the algorithms are right. So what do you say? So okay. uh, you know, it's, it becomes more of a uh, different attitude or style problem. Mm -hmm. So we, we used to get a lot of such effects 
and we used to tell them okay guys mm -hmm. uh, whoever writes the code does not matter or which algorithm whichever algorithm will pass the test case he is going to go inside that's all <laughs> you need to find some way right <clears throat> to convince them but otherwise a very nice you know uh, we were very successful okay building a mature team yeah mm -hmm. Max written this size Morty. Okay, let's run this. As you can see, the max size is six, as expected, right now. Yeah. And now it is like almost the same thing. I'm just trying to, you know, print them. So how do I print? First, I have to get the address is stored somewhere, correct? Yeah. So I can directly print the way I'm printing here, right? Same thing. So I can print here. Instead of max, I have to always say what? SPTR even of max. Why? Because this element is stored inside a structure. Yeah. See, it is a very powerful concept which you're learning right now. Because very large objects say, if I have a device which has 15 different configurations. Okay. And you want to get hold of all the 15 configuration and based on configuration one you want to do something based on configuration two you want to construct something based on configuration three you want to construct something so you imagine that one structure returned from a function can have all the nested configuration inside right now that you know nested structures also right yeah yeah so one structure if it can return something like 15 internal structures you can imagine how strong this program can become mm -hmm. Correct? Yes. So huge complexity can be answered like this. So the moment you have saying that I am returning a structure, it means I can return anything in this world. See, the beauty of software in structure is that you can represent anything in this world. Right? Say, for example, you want to write a CPU. So I'll say struct CPU, open, close, and tell me what you have in CPU. Okay, you have ALU, you have this, you have this, you have this. You have Okay, you want human, okay, struct human, human has what? Okay, it has eyes, it has brain, it has this, it has this, it has life and age, it has legs, it has everything I can write there inside, right? And functionality also. Yeah. So that's the beauty of a structure that you know structure can virtually represent anything in this world, right? And that is why it is also called as what? Abstract data type. So anything which you think can be constructed. It's a very powerful concept. Probably the basic building block for every program language struct right because it gives the power to in you know represent real life objects right yes, yes so real objects are not meant of one similar type of thing it is a combination of a lot of heterogeneous content right mm -hmm. if you look at software it gives a combination of has a combination has a means it is contained within for example h2o okay yeah. is is water Right? So yeah. water has hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen is not a water. Hydrogen is not a water. Agree? Yes. Yeah. So that's composition. Yeah. Car, okay, an engine, if you take a relation. Car has an engine. Engine is not a car. So what we are trying to understand is has a relationship, which is heterogeneous. And that is a building block. So leaving helium and hydrogen, mm -hmm. all the elements which exist in this world is a composition. Yes. It has a relationship. Yeah. So that's what I was trying to say. Now let's try to see how you will access the pointer. And your pointer. Well, 
So now I will. Uh, I mean, one second. Sure. Right. The sun is here. He has some things to do. Don't worry, Mugla. So the data access by struct pointer. Now, how do I print all of them? So here you have got correct. Here I need to get the value. So through member, right? So I would say what? Again, SPTR is my structure pointer member underscore even DS of what is my member? The array member. Let's see the array member declaration in array. Uh, it is even list only, even. correct? Yes. Uh, so I would say like this, and I'll say even underscore list of i. Hmm. As you can see, the resultant is the same. Yeah. Now I can use a different algo, maybe algo one okay in that case see it goes for error unknown type name even ds D, okay uh, line number 74 no yeah. here because i have said if then only you will accept why because the structure is not declared outside the if else structure is declared within the else part yes, yes so it's not able to recognize so either you make this as out or you can make this guarded <coughs> i can say if something like that so if not defined what algo one then you include this. So now what happens is every time you pass, now it is going to take the another route. Okay. Result is the same, but this time it is not using the structure technique to find a list of or return the list of all the even number, you know? Yes. So I hope you understood very powerful technique of, you know, returning what? more than one value from a function by using what? Pointer. Now the problem with returning the pointers are, or returning the addresses are, or a block of addresses are, we do not know the end limit of those. So one technique is you use a global variable and update it. Mm -hmm. But in that case, other functions can also modify it, right? Yeah. So you are in a mercy of that other functions apart from this, say in this line we have 500, 500 is too many say like 50 functions in this file. Mm -hmm. So all the 49 functions, including main, can also modify this global variable, right? Yeah. yeah. Accidentally, I mean, maybe. Right. Yeah. Because you will not be using this code base today. After that, you know, see, we are an uncle. Some kid will join after 15 years. He will check out this code. Yeah. For him, he may modify that code. Yes. Accidentally, correct? Yes. Yeah. So the another concrete method is what? Use a structure. And then you have an entire freedom in the world to return whatever you want, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, so these are some you know uh, techniques. So what we learned right now is today, as of now, we learned about passing in uh, a single pointer, holding a single pointer for a list of an array. Then arrays of pointers we learned. Then yes. passing the pointer in function, correct? Yeah. Yeah. It means passing arrays by a pointer and then returning the arrays as a pointer, correct? Yes. Yeah. Then we learn these techniques. Okay. So maybe we'll take a five to ten, five minutes of break, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, sure. And then we come back, we explain a little bit more about uh, 
I would say dynamic memory allocation at least. Is it fine? Yes, yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll just pause this right now. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Let me just start it. Yeah. So I just gave these examples. Now we'll talk about you know allocating memory at runtime, dynamic allocation memory. Mm -hmm. And pointer is another way of you accessing it. Right now you saw, most of the time, all the examples of us assumes that there is already some existing address, correct? Correct, it, yes. It, right, some integer is declared or some array is declared or something, something is there. So I can declare a pointer, hold to that address and access it, correct? Yeah, yeah. but imagine that if we do not have any pre-existing memory, then how do we use pointers? And what could be the motivation of using such pointers? This goes with a scenario of fixed size memory versus variable size memory technique. Now, and there is a huge discussion. See, if it is a very critical application, right? Mm -hmm. Or hardware, critical, you know, soft, uh, hardware and software development, you know, majorly we believe in statically allocating the memory, isn't it? Yes. It means pre-allocate how much ever the memory you need. See, if an application demands 2 GB of memory, 10 GB of memory or 1 terabyte of memory, better pre-store that 1 terabytes of memory and then run the application. Yes. So that you will never have to be embarrassed where you will go out of it. Yes. But the counterfeit for this is in the modern application development that what is the guarantee of you using the entire two terabyte or you know one TB or or one GB or hundred meg or ten meg or even fifteen meg or five meg or even few KBs which you store? How often you are linearly distributed with a contagious memory location usage? Right? It's been a, always a big war. So fragmentation is one thing which is often, you know, seen as a very big problem. And array causes internal fragmentation, which you cannot deal with. Now, what is internal fragmentation? It is an operating system concept. Mm -hmm. It's like out of segmentation. So if you allocate 100 elements, okay, how do you ensure that all the 100 elements are utilized? Yeah. Second, what if tomorrow you need 200 elements? So I need to go back to the source code and make the change, correct? Mm -hmm. And rebuild it. So why don't we have a, a, another mechanism where we can allocate memory based on our requirement. As and when the request comes, I keep allocating this memory. You know, so this the logic of a heap was introduced in late 70s. The heap memory, one of the very vulnerable memory, you know. Uh, it is maintained by the library. The best part is that, you know, hardware does not provide heap support. Hardware has only three supports. Automatically controlled memory, that is statically allocated memory, static variables and all. Mm -hmm. Second, stack memory is controlled by hardware. It means the moment you call the function, stack gets allocated. The moment you get away from the function, the stack gets removed. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you have a static variable, the problem is it will never be removed till you come out of the program, correct? Mm -hmm. and, and embedded programs keep running while one. So assume that if you statically allocate one meg of memory, there is no way this one meg can be free till you come out of the program, correct? Yes. And embedded applications is unlikely to come out. We love while one, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then how do we judiciously have a scenario where user can control through an external event uh, the allocation and delocation of a memory? It means while my program is running parallelly throughout, okay, I can free or clear the or use the memory. So I will decide the point of free and I will decide the point of allocation. 
and that's the whole idea where the heap was born because the limitation with the stack memory was the moment the function is over the memory is off okay yeah. so what if what if i want to reuse a memory even after the function call is over yeah yeah and, and then release it at a point when i feel it is not needed not that you will keep holding for lifetime yeah and you also mentioned that it's it's taken care uh, care of by the os right i mean yeah os provides the support and the library okay. extracts it uh -huh. so for example you know operating system will provide something like m map you know apis will be provided and libraries will wrap the api like malloc calloc realloc faralloc kind of an api on top so you know unix provides uh, you know malloc operations uh, since ages as a wrapper or a library so as a c application programmer writing a portable program for runtime memory allocation definitely needs the standard library allocation so i'll say man malloc one of the four set of function which you will often come across in runtime memory management so allocate and free dynamic memory they are part of std lib inclusion but the underlying implementation of this are by using operating system calls okay as you see by default the linux follows an optimistic memory allocation strategy this means when malloc returns non null there is no guarantee that the memory really is available and in in case turns out that system is out of memory one or more process will be killed by an um killer um killer we call it as out of memory killer okay so it means over committing the memory is maintained by the system okay it's a little bit deeper when you get a chance to get into you know this is the same concept under which the android is also built you know android also maintains a score for every process which you run or apk which you are running internally yeah. Yeah. and on there you know uh, ram disk there is a script run a script and there is where it controls the different priority of the processes so depending on the priority it decides which one has which one is in the background or which is a foreground process or which is a network foreground process which is a gpu process and depending on that the whoever is using the consuming the heavy ram you know it and if it is not in use with you know couple of conditions combined together combinational logic they will kill a particular process in the background okay yeah 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 so the same thing here also uh, in the mello but if you look at the underlying implementation of all these four apis it is a system call like brk mmap allocate or mem some malloc hooks by which you can control you know what's going on inside a malloc okay but as a as an application developer you should know about these apis okay so calloc talks about an array of memory allocation and reallocation talks about if you are not sure of a memory we allocated 10 bytes but at later point of time you wanted to extend or reduce the size then you can use something like reallocation technique Okay. Let's take one working example. Runtime. Put it here. Pdr dot c file. Yeah. Let me include. you and a little maybe i want to use a string also for some operations to show you something like string dot h and yeah and then we can discuss a little bit more on you know i think this is sufficient i can use a main here instead of a new head so i'll say in main the boy heap right 
So assume that I have a character, say some buffer, and I can use something like a malloc. And I am, see, first and foremost, buffer doesn't have any bytes, correct? Right, it doesn't have any existing memory location also. Yeah. So I might ask an user, you know, rent f, how many bytes do you need for the buffer? Okay, and he enters. So there is a scan of same on each line, and then let's have an access to the size. And now I would say that buffer assigns to malloc, and I'll use the size. No, advantage of this is that no, it's a string copy. But before that, how do I be absolutely sure that the memory is allocated? So if buffer is equal to null, it means there is some problem. So I can say print f error allocating memory else I'll try copy this stuff so go for and maybe Something like this. Even you could scan and write it. Scan F at the keyboard itself. So the idea is let's try to allocate the memory and then you know we can try free this memory. So first let's print this. Yeah. So it'll copy the string copy copies the ah, message to the buffer. To the buffer, okay. So okay. Buffer, hold that buffer should have this message, correct. So I can say something like the something like this, right? I can't say star buffer because star buffer will only give the first character. Right? We know already this. And I think after this, you are done. What you could do, you can free the memory. Right? If it is null, there is no need to free. Else, I don't need the memory, so I can free. Mm -hmm. See, if you free it here, the problem is what? Trying to, there is a possibility that it is returning, it is having null. So if it is not allocated, what are you trying to free? Yeah, so there's no point. So, yeah, there's no point in freeing it. So people do that and double free that. Okay. So free what? Buffer. So memory is free from here. Now, this can be a while one equation. So that it can get the true sense of it. Okay, no, different program it is. Runtime. Oh, 
వెళ్ళాను So it doesn't allow me, I have to log in. coding into building code sorry extremely sorry So now you can see that, you know, see, I need a 12 bytes. It's a crash. String, why is it error? You freed the buffer. Yeah. So. 12. The memory you copied was higher than that. Now you see this. Again, let's run another program. This time, say. This time, you can see here. It's fine. But it's fine. 15 also looks okay. 14. 13. 12 crashed. Because this is a test string. It goes up to that bytes and then after that it crashed. Two line, less memory, right? Your memory allocation is only less, right? Only 12 bytes, but your memory is more. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So it goes, this is completely, you know, undefined behavior for the program. So every time, see, if you have pretty large memory, you can use large memory. If you have... Less memory, you can still use less memory because it goes in paragraph. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to see that at some point of time, mm -hmm. memory gets allocated and it gets freed. Yeah. Okay. A uh, way to try. Okay, we can track this as well. Yes. Okay, now this here. Sometimes you can track this by saying, es dash el and we can grab a dot out file so you're trying to see where the exe file okay mm -hmm. and this is my pid so it's also possible that i can say cat proc maps pid pid is my process id and then i can say maps so here there is some heap area So if it goes beyond that 3000 minus 2000, this is like 1000 means minimum one page is allocated for you okay. in this process. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let's run the program first. Yeah. This time I'm going to give you something this much. Um, just a question. Just yeah. Yeah. yeah go ahead. Don't free the buffer. I mean, if we just comment that out. Yeah. That is your leak, right? You expect that to be a memory leak, isn't it? Okay. So now the program will be leaking. The problem is leak is more dangerous because it doesn't give any message. It's like a leech sucking up the RAM. You know, okay. leech running yeah. till it, till it ran, uh, run out, of out of the memory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah. here we have a control. Like unless until we press enter and do not give others, you can see now. The whole idea is if you allocate, you can track the memory sizes now. 
Okay. So yes. you can see here, two four two zero. That's yeah. So it will start increasing if you keep looking at no. Maybe with the sleep, you will find it is you know increasing very high. Okay. Yeah, because it is controlled like while one sleep a second, mm -hmm. and then you can say something like this, you know. Sleep for some seconds. Okay. Content is same, but we aren't freeing it. Now, we'll not wait for its size or something. Just going to comment this. And here what I do is So what it does, it keeps taking up the memory, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. I got my PID over here, we ran in the background, just to say, and here I'll come back and use PMAP command, and then use the PID. You can see, Memory anonymous is your heap memory, which will be increasing after some time again. Total K. You can see two three KK, two four three K. Yeah. Okay. Again, you know, after sometimes when you get exhausted, two five seven K. It will increase here, it is 552 yet, 12, 12K. Mm -hmm. But overall at runtime, the memory is being consumed. You can see here it was 412K. So it goes in the power of pages, right? Here it was only uh, 276, Six. correct? Yeah. It's changing. So you leave it for some time. You will notice that it will start showing you out of memory, it will be killed. There will be a message which will come in this program here. It will be saying it is killed. Okay. This is pretty huge memory right now what we have. It will take a while to crash. Yeah. Just three meg, it should have to go four gi and above. Yeah. yeah? So to kill that, maybe a couple of more zeros in that. That buffer message is still coming. Yeah. Running in the background? Uh, yeah, by using an ampersand, it runs in the background. I think that foreground command. Uh, yeah. And FG is just to bring one of them back. Yeah. You can use FG to just bring one of them back, right? Yeah. But you, to kill that, you have to anyway have a shell, right? Yeah. Like you need to grab that. So there are two of them. So one you have to kill. So kill minus secure. One is killed, one is still running. So now you can see all the running. I'll run this error out again. Let me 
we can say pmap dash bit one three eight seven three takes a while okay. yeah. so we'll have to give you a two-fourth so I mean you know once it goes beyond that memory you'll be finding it mm -hmm. but if you want to deduct that if it is leaking okay. the another way is this is one suspect another way is you can run a command call as val grind I'll kill this program there is a program command call as val grind val grind Okay. Uh, so if you install this, it automatically will tell you memory error is reducted. Uh, okay. And then when you say Control C, it will see give you a detailed stuff. Heap summary is here. Ninety thousand bytes in nine blocks has been used. Total heap use is nine allocation, but zero freeze. Okay. Definitely lost eighty thousand bytes in eight blocks. Okay. I mean, this is part of the, the command. Distribu uh, yeah, there is a command available. Valgrind is a tool which is available now in most of the Linux distribution. It's, it's part of the Linux, okay. Yeah, so it can debug for ARM architecture also, mm -hmm. PowerPC also, and x86 anyway from day one. So it's a strong tool to you know perform a debug. I have a debug session and uh, this also, right? After I complete the pointer, stuff and a little bit of data structure yeah. i would like to explain you about the arm build structure so in the cross build you know how you can test your applications yeah okay, okay. so right one at least you are interface program without any you know os there mm -hmm. okay. at least i can show you one example there sure thank you mm -hmm. so i think for today let's keep it over here what do you think i think so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll catch up tomorrow again yeah, sure. All right. Thanks, Animesh. Yeah, uh, sure. Just a heads up, maybe, you know, on Friday, I, I, I'm having some audit going on with at the office. Okay. So I'm not yet sure if I, how I'm placed. No I'll problem. keep you informed. We can, okay. we can have it like Monday. Rescheduled on Monday or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's perfectly fine. For issues. Hmm? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's break then. Good night. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks. Thank bye. you. Bye.